Hi, this is Steph with Belladonna Dyes, and today we're going to make a single color, two line spiral. Decide where you want the center of your spiral to be, give it a little pinch, and then I'm using the microwave splatter guard that I got from Amazon, and the link for it is down below in the description box, along with everything else that I use for tie dye, so make sure you check that out. And then I click my hemostat down on the first click. It does not need to be overly tight. You don't want to tear a hole in your shirt. I get the spiral started, and then if you look, I'm using my opposite hand to create the pleats and actually make the spiral. And then just go as far as you can using the splatter guard. And when it's time to remove the hemostat, you unclick it and gently wiggle it out while you hold down the center of the spiral. I like to secure my spirals by using my favorite rubber bands. And what you wanna do is open them up and slide them along the table underneath the spiral and then let them go. And once you get your rubber bands on the shirt, then you can tighten up your spiral by pulling on the loose tails. And I will go around and around and around and around and around as many times as I have to, pulling on those loose tails until they don't move anymore. If you need to, add more rubber bands. It does not matter which direction your rubber bands are going on your spiral. They could be lengthwise, crisscross, you can have 20 rubber bands, you can have two rubber bands. It really, really doesn't matter. The spiral is still going to come out looking like a spiral regardless of where the rubber bands are placed. That's a really nice tight looking spiral. So I thought about my die placement and I chose to remove some of the rubber bands. I'm going to be using the silicone cake molds as my ice barrier and they really hold the spiral together nicely as long as you don't have to flip the spiral over. I have the cake molds on there nice and tight and they're a little bit larger than the spiral. So I'm just going to use a paper clip to secure it and then mark out my pattern using a washable marker. Now it's time for the fun part, we get to add the dye. And many of you might be thinking, well, you've already done a coral pink single color ice dye. Yes, I did. And remember the rust? This is the second shirt that had the rust on it and it's been sitting in my files and I wanna just get it out of the computer so I thought, well, it's a good time to just go ahead and show this. Also, it's good to see coral pink done in another way. Remember that other one, it was beautiful and it was a side fan fold. So now we're going to get to see what it looks like in a spiral with some rust. I was done adding the dye and then I remembered that I removed some of the rubber bands and you guys remember the Christmas spiral that fell apart on me. So I have no intentions of flipping this spiral. So I made sure to add a nice generous layer of the dye and use the back of the spoon to really smooth it on there. Next I added a quick little sprinkle of soda ash just to the areas that have the dye on it. And you notice that I had my ice cube sitting out on the table. If you guys get these uh, silicone, what do we call them, hexa cubes, it's a good idea to leave them sitting on the table for about a minute. It makes them a lot easier to remove from the tray. I believe each tray has 37 ice cubes and it makes a medium sized shirt perfectly. 
Now when you're done, make sure before you fill up your ice tray, you rinse it out really well because you will probably have dye on the tips of your fingers and get it in your ice tray. And then you want to set your project aside and let it batch for 48 hours after the ice melts. This is one of those shirts that ended up batching well over 72 hours. It's when we had lost our power and I couldn't get back home to work on my shirts. Um, so that's how long ago I recorded this. That was like back in December. All right, so you see that rust that was on there and that's from the dollar store rack. And it has been suggested that you can spray your racks with like a, like a spray paint sealer. Since this came from the dollar store, I figured I would just throw it away and I just won't be buying those anymore. All right, so for the rinse out, you wanna start by using cold water to rinse away any soda ash that might still be reacting within the fabric and increase your water up too hot. And if you're trying to protect white, make sure you rinse all that soda ash out of the white. Okay, from here it goes to the washing machine and I do however many hot water cycles it takes using Kirillon and it's about two cycles. And on the third hot water cycle, I use Millsoft and I use it as a standalone in the third hot water cycle. Then I put it in the dryer and I iron it and we'll come back and we'll see the results. Well, here it is guys. Here's our single color two line spiral ice dye after it's been washed and dried. And I think this shirt is absolutely stunning. I love this color. I love this pattern. I just don't love the rust. It is a total bummer and a complete letdown that there is rust. You know, at least the rust follows the spiral pattern. And if I didn't point it out, nobody would probably even really notice. I just made the shirt and so I know it's there and we are our own worst critics. So, Moral of the story, if you see rust on your racks, don't use it. And then I decided to put a side-by-side -side in of the two coral pink shirts so you can see just how differently the color looks in a different pattern and all the variables, uh, batch time, temperature, how much ice, how much dye really can affect the color. So what do you guys think of the coral pink spiral? Please leave me some comments down below. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe to my channel, leave a thumbs up and click the bell and set it to all. That way you get notified of future uploads. And remember, have fun tie-dyeing.